seen 16, and if I had to guess, probably 17 months now of exceeded earnings in our sales tax collections here in the state. And only 10% of us said we were doing better today than we were a year ago. And I was one of those with my hand down, definitely not doing better than I was a year ago. Uh, but we've got more people that are moving into this state. We have more jobs. Our economy is growing, and that's why our sales tax collections are increasing. And we did that without raising taxes. I'm not a proponent of raising taxes. Uh, but I am definitely a proponent of public education. I have two boys in schools in Dripping Springs. They're facing a $3.8 million shortfall for this next year. Uh, and I've got two nephews, soon to be three nephews, that have transferred into Wimberley schools because they came here and they wanted to come here for the quality of education that they could get. So I'm afraid if we raise taxes or look to raise taxes to get additional sources of revenue, that we might actually decrease the revenue because you're going to put people in a place where they can't afford to pay it. And that's one of my biggest concerns. But we've got to reduce the burden of Robin Hood. That's redistribution of wealth. That's socialism. That's what everybody's screaming about. The <laughs> if we have school districts that need additional funding, let's let those school districts get other money from other sources, maybe from sales tax revenue collections, maybe from oil and gas collections. And I'm in the energy industry. Well, we've got to see that. We've, if those schools truly need that amount of money, or they need that money, but you look at some Chapter 42 school districts that are receiving our dollars, both here at Wimberley and Dripping Springs, they're driving charter school buses to games. They've got phenomenal facilities because they're not only getting our money they're stealing from us, that the state is stealing from us, they're getting federal dollars. We've got to find some ways to fix that so that we can keep more of our money here. It's what, you, what, what I'm hearing, local control of our tax dollars. And that's what we need, and that's what we've got to work towards fixing. Next session. First, I'd like to comment that I think your socialism comment is a little overbroad. Um, first of all, I don't consider it stealing to educate the poor kids in the, in the state who don't have, and there are kids who don't have. It's not stealing. It benefits me to have the entire state well-educated. And if that means money comes from me and it goes to them, I can deal with it. I don't feel like somebody's stealing it from me. But I do have a question. I have a question about, one, did you vote for this thing that reduced the $4.5 billion? Yes, I, I voted for our budget to, okay. what was your rationale to, to when cut you spending without raising our taxes. Okay. Times, times are difficult. Everybody's learning to do more with less. Okay. And the money's just not there. But let me give you some facts. Over the last 10 years, Public education funding has increased 95%. <clears throat> Inflation's gone up 32%. Enrollment's gone up 23%. We've seen a 500% differential in the amount of funding for public education than we have enrollment growth. So one thing that I tried to work on last legislative session was reducing the burdens that school districts are under. And I told Dwayne this from the very beginning. For, the, for Dwayne put together a meeting, we had nine school districts that are in House District 45. I had one superintendent come up to me and say, you're the first time I've, you're the first time I've met my state representative. And I said, oh, you must be new. And he says, no, I've been here for 12 years in his particular district. I was shocked, but we got together and I listened to what some of the concerns were. And I said, if I can't get any more money for the schools, how can I help you? And standardized testing was the number one thing that came out of that meeting. We've got to reduce the burdens of standardized testing are placing on the schools. So I actually joined, I filed a couple of bills and ultimately didn't push my bills because I found a better solution. And a better solution was a Democrats bill out of Houston that awarded students who did so well on standardized testing and gave them an exemption. So if you did really well on year one of your standardized testing, you'd get to skip another year. And if you did really well that third year, then you get to skip two more years. And it took the potential of standardized testing from seven years and reduced that down to possibly three years. That's what a huge that cost savings, savings on the school how district. Much, how much would that cost savings have been? I, I couldn't tell you specifically. Okay, so. But it is, so it is a significant portion of savings. If you have an exemplary rated school, that's 90% of the students that are doing very well on standardized testing, they would qualify for that exemption. So you'd just be testing at maximum 10% of your students in, a, in an exemplary rated school. In an exemplary, but we're not, we're not an exemplary rated school. And so that would not happen here. I don't know what the percentage is for threshold for recognized. Okay. But my, my next question is, I've been given a pamphlet with a bunch of names and a whole lot of, you know, become educated. And I'm happy to do so. And having been a board member at one time, I feel like I have some chops. What do you want us to do? What are you asking us to do? Or, I mean, I don't know what to do with this information. Because you're telling me the only thing to do is that. That's that. 
Well, first of all, if the only thing to do is a tax ratification election and we can only raise $540,000, that's going to be another quick fix. I mean, that's how we've been operating for so long, there are these little quick fixes. The, the, the major thing that you can do, and everyone in this room, is get to the legislative session and try to do something at the legislative, uh, as far as cutting money. I mean. Omar made a good point, is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Omar, if I'm misstating you here, but the most important thing is that we've been cut all this money this last session, so now instead of making us whole, instead of giving us that money back, we've created a new norm, as you stated, which I think is very critical for us because a lot of us superintendents really felt like, wow, we're going to take this huge hit, but surely they would see that we need to be made whole. In other words, this $2.4 million that we got cut in state funding, surely that would return once the economy got better. But the structural deficit is going to keep us from that. Medicaid is going to keep us from that. All these things that you saw will keep us from that. So we've got to do something different as far as school funding goes. That's got to change. There has to be, forgive me for saying this, I'm very conservative, there's got to be some new money somewhere. There has to be. And to continue to go to taxpayers like us, who 55% we keep and 45% we give away, and just the whole school's uh, finance system, and, you know, Omar knows more than I do, and he probably thinks that I'm, I'm on, on a rant again, because I am. That system's got to change, and the only people who will be able to change it is your legislators. They know that. They know that. I, I have conversations with Jason all the time. I do. I have conversations with these people. That's what has to change, in my opinion. That has to change. This is to Jason Isaac. I think we met at Jacob's Well fundraiser right when you were first elected, and we talked about golden pennies. And the only thing that we have the power to do to have funding is either to get more students or to have a tax rollback election. But as we've talked about, when we, if we are able to get any more funding in, part of that money on those nine cents that we have now 55%, I believe, will go back to the state because they're not golden pennies. And when we talked, the very first time we met, I said, please, when you go to the legislature, would you please try to get us more golden pennies because that's local control. And I think everybody, Democrat, Republican, everybody can agree that that local control is the easiest, best way to get it. Did you introduce any legislation to get us more golden pennies? No, I did not introduce legislation to get us more golden pennies. I worked with the chairman of Pub Ed, who was right across the hall from me, and spoke to him numerous times about Wimberley and the situations and asked him what we could do. And when I was getting nowhere with that, that's when I started working with other people, like Scott Hawker, retiring Democrat out of Houston. And he said our best bet was to reduce the burdens of standardized testing you would save more money on that than getting the gold penny. Well, we would be having about 400, I don't know, uh, we would have about $450,000 more in our pocket if we had that local control right now of those gold pennies. Let me ask you something else. If we did get more money back in our pocket right now, we would have this, the money that we're sending back if we have any more taxes that we were able to get a tax rollback election, you say, everybody keeps throwing around the term Robin Hood. If we, if we could just get rid of it called Robin Hood. The money that goes back right now to the state, does it in fact go to poorer districts? Or are those districts in fact frozen in time? And do they in fact stay at their target revenues? And they're just stuck there as well? That I don't know. Dwayne, do you, do you know that question? Or I, 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 I think Omar so does. So let, so let's, so. let me get an example. Let's, Let's say that it costs the state to educate the number of students that we have. Let's say the state's got to spend, thank you. Let's say that, that right now to educate everybody that we have in the state, that it costs, let's say, 
20 billion dollars. Okay, so and it's a state of responsibility to pay to pay for that. Okay, so how do they do it? And they've got all kinds of taxes to pay for it, and that goes towards meeting that cost. You saw in one of those graphs earlier. Uh, right now, Chapter 41 recapture payments are about a little over one billion dollars. Okay, so instead of the state having to come up with 20 billion dollars. <laughs> Now they only have to come up with $19 billion because a billion dollars is coming from you guys. Yeah. It's safe. It's not going to any particular, not anymore anyway, it used to go. Uh, it is not going to any particular school district as much as it was when it first began back in the early 90s. Now it's going to the state to help the states pay for its cost, its responsibilities. So that billion dollars that, that, that is going towards Austin is being, it's a financing source for the state to pay for their total cost of education. That's the way it works. And the school districts are stuck. They're not school getting is, more yeah, money. Right. And let me address the Golden Pennies for, for a second. Those Golden Pennies, you have six of them. The first, the first six above your compressed rate, your dollar compressed rate, the first six are golden. Everything else above that gets recaptured uh, at some level. But those six pennies, how much you get for those six pennies, uh, unrecaptured, there's a minimum on how much you can get for those six pennies, and it's tied to Austin ISD's wealth per student. And you happen to be more than that. You happen, to, you, you happen to collect more than what Austin ISD gets for their pennies. But everybody, for those six pennies, they get at least what Austin ISD gets for their penny when they tax themselves a penny per student. So that, that's the floor, but it's, un, it's unlimited above that. And so wh whatever you get for those six pennies, again, there's no recapture on that. But there is a floor you, you're guaranteed to get not less than what Austin ISD gets for their penny. So as long as you're above Austin, you get to keep it all. If, you're, if you drop below Austin, you get some help to get you up to Austin's level. So that's, that's the way that works.